There's been four-wheel drive tractors since the start of the industry, but they didn't catch on until the 1950s. At that time, farms were getting larger and farmers needed bigger tractors with more horsepower. Four-wheel drive tractors with 100 horsepower seemed to be the answer. Some of these tractors were great successes, while others were massive failures. Let's take you through our top 10 classic four-wheel drive tractors. Number 10, the Wagner TR Series Tractors. The Wagner brothers developed and patented their tractor in 1953 and started selling in 1954 with the models TR6, TR9, and TR14, which they called tractor mobiles. All three were articulated four-wheel drive tractors. In 1961, Wagner sold to the Four-Wheel Drive Corporation of Clintonville, Wisconsin, which manufactured heavy-duty off-road vehicles. They created a tractor vision called Four-Wheel Drive Wagner. Beginning in 1969, John Deere bought out the production of Wagner tractors until they developed their own models after the failed 8010s and 8020s. John Deere re-entered the four-wheel drive tractor market in 1971, but Wagner signed a five-year no-compete clause, which left Wagner unable to build tractors. This essentially ended Wagner in the agricultural market. Number 9, the Versatile 100 Series Tractors. The two models were almost identical. The G100 had a gasoline engine, while the D100 had a diesel engine. These two tractors were the first four-wheel drive articulated tractors built by the Versadile Company of Winnipeg, Canada. The D100 has a Ford six-cylinder, 363 cubic inch diesel engine that can do 100 horsepower. The G100 has a Chrysler eight-cylinder, 318 cubic inch gasoline engine that could also do 100 horsepower. The transmission has four gears plus one reverse gear with a four-speed transfer case which made it capable of 12 forward speeds and four reverse speeds. The G100 and D100 tractors became extremely popular with their $10,000 price tag, which was about one-third of the cost of similar models made by other tractor manufacturers like John Deere and International Harvester. These tractors were only produced in 1966 with a total of 100 diesels and 25 gas. Although production numbers were low in the first year, the company produced over 1,000 tractors in 1967. Versatile was one of the first companies to mass produce articulated four-wheel drive tractors. At one time, the company controlled 70% of the four-wheel drive market. Number 8, the John Deere Model 8010 and 8020. The 8010 was John Deere's first attempt at building and marketing their own four-wheel drive articulated tractor. It was released in 1960, along with John Deere's new generation series tractors, which marked the end of the two-cylinder design and introduced new four- and six-cylinder engines. The 8010 is powered with a six-cylinder, 425 cubic inch Detroit diesel engine rated at 215 horsepower. This massive tractor weighed in at 20,000 pounds. It could run at 7 miles an hour, pulling a custom-designed 5,000-pound eight-bottom plow. At that speed, it could turn over 50 acres of soil in one day. The tractor also carried a hefty price tag of $30,000 U.S. dollars, or about $257,000 U.S. dollars in 2019. Early on, 8010s developed a serious flaw. The transmissions began to overheat, causing the seals to fail, which would soak the clutches in oil. Deere initiated a recall of all 8010s. Back at the factory, transmissions were replaced, engines tested, and clutches updated. When the recalled tractors went back to their owners, they were relettered 8020s, and all remaining models were marketed as 8020s. In the end, the tractor proved a failure for Deere. Only 100 of these tractors were built, with between 80 and 90 still in existence. Only one 8010 survived the recall and resides in the Keller collection. Number seven, the Alice Chalmers T16 Sugar Babe. This was Alice Chalmers' first attempt at building and marketing a four-wheel drive tractor. Also known as a Sugar Babe, this tractor design started its life as an Alice Chalmers TL16 industrial loader. The loader was removed, the steering rearranged, and the platform reversed to transform this tractor into the T-16. Yellow painted versions were sold through Alice Chalmers Industrial Division for use as haulers in the sugarcane fields, from which the name Sugar Babe originated. The T-16 was originally powered by an Alice Chalmers four-cylinder, 344 cubic inch turbocharged diesel engine, but problems with this engine developed and the four-cylinder engine was replaced at serial number 1910 with an Alice Chalmers six-cylinder, 
426 cubic inch turbocharged diesel engine that could do about 135 horsepower. When the T-16s were in heavy use in the cane fields, more problems arose with the Alice Chalmers engines, and most T-16s were replaced with a 471 Detroit diesel engine. Only about 15 of these tractors were sold during its production run from about 1963 to 1964. Today, less than a half a dozen are still known to exist. Number 6. The Minneapolis Moline A4T1400 In 1969, Minneapolis Moline produced its first articulated four-wheel drive tractor. The tractor was offered as the Minneapolis Moline A4T1400, the White's Plainsman A4T1600, and as the Oliver 2455. Minneapolis Moline built the A4T series from 1969 to 1972, which included the A4T1400 and the A4T1600 with a total of 1,676 built. Records show that only 247 diesel A4T1400s were built. The A4T1400 is powered by a Minneapolis Moline six-cylinder 405 cubic inch diesel engine that could do about 139 horsepower. There was an option to turbocharge the engine, which brought the rating up to 154 horsepower. The transmission has 10 forward speeds and 2 reverse speeds, with the tractor weighing in at 17,500 pounds. The A4T 1400 was replaced by the A4T 1600 in 1970. Number 5. The International 4300 The 4300 was the first four-wheel drive tractor sold and marketed by the International Harvester Company. The tractor was in part a reaction to the upcoming release of John Deere's 8010 tractor. The tractor was massive, weighing in at over 29,000 pounds. It was powered by an international harvester, six-cylinder, 817 cubic inch, 300 horsepower turbocharged diesel engine that could do about 200 horsepower on the drawbar. The transmission has eight forward gears and four reverse gears. It was also rated to pull a 10-bottom plow. The 4300 was produced from 1961 to 1965 with only a total of 44 built. Back in 1970, the 4300 would have cost you about 12,000 US dollars or about 80,000 US dollars in 2019. The tractor proved a financial failure for the company with limited production in part for being too big too soon. Number 4. The Case 1200 Traction King. The 1200 Traction King was J.I. Case's first four-wheel drive tractor. Instead of building a more expensive articulating tractor, Case built a rigid frame model with four-way steering. This unique steering meant you could use the front steering wheel for conventional field work and for road travel. The rear steering could be used for hitching up to implements and maneuvering in closed spaces. With this design, the front wheels could turn in one direction while the rear wheels turned in the opposite. This tractor could also crab steer or steal the wheels in both direction. This allowed the tractor to compensate for drift on side slopes and to turn the wheels uphill. The 1200 is cited as the first tractor to have this type of steering. The 1200 was powered by a JIK six-cylinder 451 cubic inch diesel engine. This engine was turbocharged, which took it from 105 horsepower to 120 horsepower on the PTO. It weighed in at 17,200 pounds and was rated to pull an eight-bottom plow. The transmission has six forward speeds and six reverse speeds with a range from 2.6 to 13.4 miles per hour. Only 1,549 of these tractors were built from 1964 to 1969. Production ended when Case phased out the 1200 for the new 1470 model. Back in 1969, this tractor would have cost you about 20,200 US dollars or about 141,000 US dollars in 2019. Number 3, the International Harvester 2 Plus 2. In 1978, International Harvester introduced the 3388 and the 3588 tractors, the company's first line of 2 Plus 2 tractors. These tractors proved an initial success for the company. In 1979, with its new line of 2 plus 2 tractors, International Harvester captured one quarter of the four-wheel drive tractor sales. Unlike other four-wheel drive tractors, the 2 plus 2 had cabs located behind the articulating joint. The rear half of the tractor was actually the back half of International 86 series two-wheel drive tractors. The engine was mounted ahead of the front axle, which increased the weight on the front drive axle to increase traction. 
These tractors were also more cost efficient to build since they used readily available components currently in use by other international tractors. The 2 Plus 2 also used existing international engines. The 3388 model was powered by a DT436 turbocharged diesel engine rated at 130 horsepower on the PTO. The 3588 model was powered by a DT466 turbocharged diesel engine rated at 150 horsepower on the PTO. Both tractors used IHC's torque amplified transmission with 16 forward speeds and 8 reverse speeds. A total of 2,146 of the 3388s were built and 5,643 of the 3588s were built. Both models weighed in at about 17,500 pounds with a 15.9 foot turning radius. Both the 3388 and the 3588 were built from 1979 to 1981. They were then replaced by the 60 series 2 plus 2 tractors. In November of 1984, Tenneco bought International Harvester's Agricultural Division and merged it with J.I. Case. After the merger, the work on the 2 Plus 2 series stopped and Case went on to develop their Magnum line. Number 2. The First Production Steiger In the late 1950s, Steiger brothers found themselves needing a large tractor on their farm and after looking at tractors available at the time, including the Wagner, they decided to build their own. In 1963, the brothers built this tractor, which was the first Steiger ever sold to the public. Their neighbor, Lloyd Pierce, bought the tractor and used it for many years on his farm. After the Pierce tractor was built, the brothers decided to start commercial production and built their first five tractors in the barn on the Steiger farm. This tractor had always been in the Pierce family and is where George Shaft acquired it. This tractor sold on the 2016 Remarkable George Shaft Collection Auction for $34,125 U.S. dollars. This first production Steiger is powered by a Detroit six-cylinder, 238-horsepower diesel engine. The transmission has five forward speeds and one reverse. The tractor weighs in at 15,000 pounds. In the late 1980s, Steiger fell on hard financial times, and in 1986, Steiger was purchased by Tenneco, the parent company of Case IH. Today, Case IH uses the Steiger name on all their quad track and four wheel drive tractors. Number 1 The Big Bud 747. The Big Bud 747 held the title for many years as the world's largest farm tractor. At 900 horsepower, it's about twice the size of most farm trackers currently on the market. It's powered by a Detroit 16-cylinder, 1,472 cubic inch, two-cycle diesel engine. It was originally rated at 760 horsepower, but later was increased to 860 horsepower, and then finally increased to 1,100 horsepower. The transmission has six forward speeds and one reverse speed. The 747 weighs in at 95,000 pounds, but weighs over 100,000 pounds when its 1,000-gallon fuel tank is full. The 747 was built by the Northern Manufacturing Company, later renamed Big Bud Tractors in Haver, Montana in 1977. The tractor was made for the Rossi brothers of Bakersfield, California for their use on their cotton farms and was estimated at a cost of $300,000 U.S. dollars. That's about $1,178,000 U.S. dollars today. The brothers used it for 11 years and then it was sold to Willowbrook Farms in Florida. After some years of disuse, it was bought by Randy and Robert Williams of Big Sandy, Montana, just 60 miles from where the tractor was built in 1977. The Williams brothers used it on their farm for many years. In the year 2000, the company who made Big Bud's custom 8-foot tires went bankrupt. This news contributed to the brothers deciding to retire the tractor and put it on display at the Heartland Museum in Clarion, Iowa. In 1985, Big Bud Tractors was purchased by Messer Brothers. Production of the Big Bud slowed in the 1990s, with the last one off the assembly line in 1992. So tell us what you think. Are these the top 10 classic four-wheel drive tractors, or do you disagree? What top 10 list would you like to see next? Tell us in the comments. Thanks for watching. Be sure to click subscribe to get updates on our latest tractor videos.